Greetings. My name is the Reverend Miguel Angel Hernandez. I'm a Salvadorian who came to the United States in 1977 with my sister and my mother. Just uh, before the Civil War erupted in El Salvador, as you might recall, El Salvador had been under a terrible war, perhaps not a declared war, but many peasants, students, were being killed, including workers, teachers, and university professors. The history of El Salvador is a history of violence. A violence that came from the oligarchy and the army and all the oppressive forces such as the National Police, the National Guard and many other groups. Growing up in El Salvador in the 1960s was difficult. I grew up as a child in that time. My mother, a hard-working woman who spent her time in a market in San Jacinto, used to make us wake up as early as 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And we end up working until 11 p.m. every day. It was hard to earn a living in those days. I am one of those kids who came from that terrible situation. It was very hard. There were times when I did not go to school because there were so many strikes. I don't know how I was able to graduate from elementary school, but I found very early that gaining an education in El Salvador was very difficult. As a matter of fact, my father tried to put me into an auto shop to learn a skill when I was just supposed to be in eighth grade. Things did not work out that well, and eventually I went back to school. And I decided that education was going to be my ticket out of that situation. And so I set out myself to accomplish that. I never finished high school in El Salvador. On the third year that I was supposed to be at school, to graduate from high school, we left to New York, where I ended up having menial jobs, but my love for education kept me going back to school. I learned to speak English. And while working all the time, I managed to go to college. And uh, I was able to graduate from different, different colleges and universities in New York City. As an adult, while working, I continued my education. Things were really difficult in Salvador. And here we are now, after so many years. The Civil War in El Salvador, carried out by the Frente Faraón de Martí para la Liberación Nacional, the Faraón de Martí Liberation Front, was supposed to bring change to the country that has spent almost 12 years in a civil war. However, change never came. Dagoberto Gutierrez, an intellectual in El Salvador, who was also a member of the guerrilla, is recently telling us that the FMLN basically pacted with the oligarchy in Mexico in 1992, in which it was accepted that there would be no structural changes in El Salvador as long as the FMLN would enter into the political sphere and be part of the system. 
as a child growing up in El Salvador, that was not what we expected that would happen as a result of the Civil War. Or, as uh, Salvador Samayoa says, that the Civil War was carried out in El Salvador so that we can go and vote to participate in elections. That's an outright lie. I'm telling you because I was part of that a struggle in the 60s and 70s and 80s. As a little child, I became aware of the injustices in El Salvador. So we are at the point where we are working around the person of Najib Bukele. We believe that his track record is telling us that change could bring hope in El Salvador, that change can happen in El Salvador, that change is possible. But that can only occur if we all together join forces and participate in this particular event in which we can bring a person to be the president of El Salvador so that changes can take place. And let us not forget that there were crimes committed against humanity in El Salvador. Those crimes are still crying for justice. Oscar Romero is still crying for justice. Roque Dalton is still crying for justice. All the unknown names, the UCA martyrs are still crying for justice. So I encourage you to participate in this process but also to demand Najib Bukele, he makes it to the point where he becomes a president, to guarantee the changes that are needed in El Salvador. Because if we don't deal with the issues of violence, of crimes that have been committed, peace will never come to El Salvador. Justice will never come to El Salvador. And then we are going to be in a situation in which we probably will have to wait many, many years in order for us to achieve our goal in El Salvador, which is simply this, that people could live in liberty, that people can enjoy health and education, and that the children are taken care of. That's all we're asking for. We're not asking for more than that. And the country had the resources to fulfill the needs of the people. We know that. And we, the people of El Salvador, is most demanded. Thank you very much, and God bless you.